Hey fellow players, welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be about Star Wars Hunters, which is not yet released in the US, and I recently found out, hey, it is actually released in Mexico. And being that I'm in Mexico a lot, I figured I might as well try it out. So you start off the game and it dumps you off into this uh, tutorial. And basically, this is a 4 versus 4 game where you have different game modes basically of all arena. The more you play, the more you power up your hunters, and the more hunters you earn. So then the more powerful you get, the higher you rank up. And they have several rankings, I'll get into that later. So basically the gameplay, if you just play on mobile, the left side of the screen moves your hunter, and the right side of the screen moves your crosshairs for aiming. So it, it wants to introduce some of these uh, interesting hunters. And I like the, the first uh, hunter that you play looks like the Princess Leia bounty hunter in Return of the Jedi. And having been in introduced to that hunter, I've kind of taken to the uh, the sniper ranged attack type of hunter first off. And so you've got these, these close-up ones that are generally tanks, uh, and then you've also got these uh, ranged attackers. And then there's the different game modes, some being kill everybody, kill 20, some being... Uh, capture stations and then i just recently captured or opened up the third game mode but haven't played it yet and i'm not really sure what the fourth game mode is it's kind of a derivative of that but as you can see your crosshairs you get you get focused on them their their health bar will go down um it's obviously not that this easy this is the tutorial but i'm thinking if I'm going to keep playing the game, I'll probably want to get some kind of uh, Bluetooth controller for mobile, if it's compatible. I think it is. Um, so different uh, alien races that you can play. <laughs> the double Jawas is kind of interesting. Um, the Wookiee, of course, is is a favorite of people. Uh, they have a Sith that you have to purchase. I'm, not, I'm just doing the free-to-play version. And there she is right there. She's pretty popular. Almost every match has her in it. Uh, and the, the thoughts are this game is going to release in the U.S. pretty soon, even though it's been delayed over and over and over and over again. But some, are, some folks are speculating that after this Arena Pass ends in something like 40 days, that maybe we'll see the U.S. release. Um, we'll see. So that's the end of the tutorial right there. And then it kind of loads you into the regular, this is almost like a bastion. So now I get to start off, what is my name going to be? Well, my name's going to be Bernicorn. Bear with me as I figure out how to actually type on my phone. What I like about this game is that it's easy to pick up and put down. It, the matches don't last that long. They last a couple minutes, and they are fast-paced. They're really interesting. There's no downtime. You're not waiting on what the other players are going to do. Sometimes there is. <laughs> I mean, like Live Arena, it's almost it, it's, it's exclusively Live Arena with four players versus four players. So looking back at Raid, like Live Arena, you'd have 15 seconds in between moves. And here, sometimes you'll be kind of camping a location. So here I get started in my first kill 10 match. They then become kill 20, but basically it's kill 10. So I'm just kind of ranged attacking the people as I can. And our team's leading. But you got to be moving around constantly. I think as a sniper, I'm trying to find the happy medium between like camping one spot and not being vulnerable. So far, I kind of like the, uh, the, the kill amount where you kill 20, and mainly because that just allows me to unleash on people, whereas it's it's a little bit more thought-provoking to try and capture the stations. The only thing that's kind of limiting in this, this would be kind of fun in, I think, like a VR headset or something like that, because the, the view area kind of limits your ability to react, to me at least. Um, but I do like the gameplay style and i never played unreal but i guess this is on the unreal uh engine from the late 90s so you can see you have a timer 
whoever's in the lead if the time runs out. I have very few seen few matches where the time runs out. Um, otherwise, you're just trying to hit that out of 10 here. If my squad can get the 10 kills, then we are good. And if you just sit there just kind of squaring off on them, often you're not going to win because they're going to take you out quicker than you're going to take them out, depending on who they've picked or who you've picked. So, as you can see, um, the Wookiee is kind of one of those close close tanks, so he can take a lot of damage. And what I like to do as a sniper, ranged attacker, is kind of hang back, try and keep myself out of the action. And when I see one of the tanks engage, if it's if it's a kill amount, then I, I'll see one of the tanks engage, and then I'll just kind of back them up and just start trying to mow down whoever's engaging them. So here in my first battle, we are one away. And as you can see, I'm just trying to figure out the gameplay a little bit in this one. But it's kind of nice to see us in the lead. And then it looks like, am I going to get my first death? Yeah, somebody's going to eliminate me right here. Or are they? So we win. As I took that one out, we got the victory. And everything so far is Mudhorns versus Goondarks. So those are the two teams between the eight players. So you can see there, I got the most kills in my first fight, which is not always the case. Sometimes I am the underperformer, and sometimes you get people on your team who then get started into it, and they put their phone down or whatever they're doing, and they go do something else, and they just stand in the start point the entire match, and basically you lose that way. Because one person does not carry a team. So there's the arena pass it wants to point out, and you're going to go, you're going to level up the arena pass, and as you level up the arena pass, it's going to unlock free things, and if you buy the arena pass, the all-access arena pass, then you get a bunch of stuff, and you see, I just won this avatar, and this is the one I'm going to use, it's the Obi-Wan vs. Maul on Tatooine avatar, which I think is pretty cool. Um, if you buy the arena pass, then you get Reeve, and I don't know how arena pass items go from one season to another, because, just trying this thing out. So I claim my first reward, and it's 20 crystals. So those crystals you can spend on upgrades. There is a part of the shop where you can spend them, and you can see I have my first 20. So there's Reeve can get a Sith Lord costume. So if I was to go ahead and buy this, I'd have Reeve, and I could have that costume, whatever I wanted there. Um, but I think for now I'm not going to buy Reeve. So there's this blind sniper guy. He's kind of interesting. And so, after a little while, you open up more game modes. You can see there's events going on for power control, then there's the casual mode, which has multiple things you can get, and ranked has multiple things you can get. So you have squad brawl, is what you're first introduced to, so this one is you have to kill 20. And you get more points for the more that you kill. And you get assists, and then you get docked points for you getting killed. Then there's power control, where you want to score points by controlling two of the three power spots. Or all three gets you more points. Dynamic control, so the power point, control point, you have to stay on it, and it's going to move around. Trophy case, you have to catch this droid or something, and I haven't played this mode at all. I also haven't played dynamic control. So you want to control the droid here, and you don't want the enemy team to get him. So, it seems like if you go into events, you can definitely get the type that that is, like power control, but if you go into casual or ranked, you only get the type, well, you get whatever type you get assigned. So I go into casual here, and we go into the matchmaking, and the time to get a match isn't that far off from, say, like live arena and raid. It gives you an estimate based on the amount of people that are playing at the time, and so then once it... it puts you in, it still may not be full of the eight. It might only have, say, six, and it'll show you the status there. So after this portion loads, so we see I'm also going to have power control in the Dune C outpost. So then we also have seven out of eight players. So we were waiting for the eighth to join before we can select. You can select one of them that you have. I usually go with Amara, the one that bounty hunter that kind of looks like, uh, yeah, Amara Vex. Unless somebody else takes her. And so you can't have the same thing 
on your team. Someone on the other team can have the same player. So you're all, your team is always going to be blue, and their team is always going to be red, and you can only attack their players. You basically shoot through your own, and you attack theirs. So the match starts, and the gladiator door opens, and in power control, you want to go to the power control point. So I'm just kind of running around aimlessly, not really doing anything with my team. There's really no communication methods. There are ways that you can have friends and stuff. Um, so my team has already captured C. I like C. I like to guard this spot because there's a spot where you can power up your special skills and just kind of watch the enemy team come in and you can just snipe them off. Um, and realistically, if like one person on your team can capture this control point and then the other three are working on another one, you're in pretty good shape. Um, what I don't like about it is the lack of interaction with the other players on your team. There just isn't, like, a, a communication. There's no way to really say, hey, you guys do this, you guys do that. So we're trying to get control point C back, and now I'm going to kind of camp it. I have figured out that I don't want to sit on the control point, because then I'm right in the crosshairs of somebody. If I come right back here, I'm in a really good spot. There's also power-ups. If you get shot but don't get killed, then you can kind of increase your health. So that guy ran off. Oh, and then I get eliminated. So I'm actually pretty terrible at these control points, but I am getting better. My teams are starting to, uh, to win a little bit better. What I figure is you should be winning about 50% if based on who you get assigned to. If you're winning less than 50%, it means you're not very good. If you're winning more more than 50%, you should see that you're kind of carrying the team. The respawn points have to do with how close you were um, to certain control points or different parts of the arena map. I think overall, it's a really fun interaction. I wish that there was just a little bit more in being able to coordinate with your own team. So it's kind of a waste if all three of us are just kind of sitting here um, on one point, because that means we're three, uh, 75 percent of our team resources are on one, and that means we left the other two for the other teams. And somebody's picking me off. So you never want to sit on the control point like I was just doing because it's easy to get sniped. So I pop back up and into it. So as you can see, it's just kind of, it doesn't really matter how many you kill. You do get, uh, you kind of get better points for individual quests if you are taking people out on these control point ones. Uh, but the big thing is that you sit there and you take control of the points. There you see we got destroyed there. The other team was able to handle the control points a lot easier than we were. So we got defeated 100% to 35%, and that's pretty bad. But as you can see, this new player, Jedi 14 ee well, he probably just sat at the spawn point and didn't play the whole time. So... I didn't do very well, so I can't be too critical of him. The personal score is, is based off what you're doing to the other, to the opponent, how much you're shooting them. So it, in power control, it, I don't think that it really reflects maybe who's doing the best. But in general, I think it reflects who's doing the best. So we got these milestones. You get some of the in-game currency by... Completing the challenges, completing the milestones, you level up your hunter's path. Hunter's path gets you a new hunter. Um, the more you use a hunter, the higher you level up their abilities and make them stronger. So obviously you're at a disadvantage when you first start. But this is the next guy I would be getting, this sprocket guy. And then there's the Jedi droid, which I think he's pretty cool. And this guy, don't really like him, but whatever. I don't really like him either. And there's the two Jawas, which are kind of funny. And then ending with this guy, which I th thought was a droid every time I looked at it, but apparently it's this guy riding a droid. So 
So we'll go look at the hunters I have access to. Obviously I don't have Reeve. So we go in and you can see I've been using Amara Vex the most, but Diago, here's his abilities. Amara Vex I have at level 8. I haven't really used the grapple ability, so that's the thing is like, I'm not really an expert at using these guys yet. I've barely started using them, but they have multiple special abilities. That one's a healer. And this guy's just the big tank, but he can smash people against walls. Um, this guy has a shield he can activate while he has his heavy repeater. So I think once it comes to the US, I think if you want to mess around and kind of get used to each of the champions, hunters, gameplays, um, that'll help you be a better player at this game. If you just kind of mess around with them, see which one you like the best. And you have this social network, you can friend people. So you can do that from the fight screen after you've finished up. You can friend people who are in your party, or you can friend people who are in the opponent's party. And so if you say screenshot your matches and you want to friend somebody that that you've played with you can do that so then here's the rankings uh that i think opens up at level six and i'm at the bottom of 15 leagues and so it's a lot of climbing to do i wouldn't be too concerned with ranking until you're really used to which hunters are you good at um and then start getting them leveled up because if you go in with a level one hunter into the ranking and you're trying to move up, you're against other people who are also trying to move up and probably not going to do that well. So there are these, there's the shop and you can buy this stuff. Lots of microtransactions. They do advertise stuff as you pop in. It's nothing too crazy in the ads like Raid is. But so for me, I'm not really trying to spend any money. I'm just trying to, uh, Mess around with a gameplay, see if I like the game, see if it's going to be a game that I want to keep playing for a while. When it does come to the U.S. is probably when I would be looking at playing it more often. Um, a little expensive to travel to Mexico. But since I do go to Mexico multiple times out of the year, I'm able to kind of check this thing out before it comes to the U.S. So, hope you enjoyed this Star Wars Hunters preview, and take care. Yeah.